Oh, hello. I am here. Sorry about that. Okay, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to a slightly twisted female. I'm your host, Brittany Rue. Hello, hello. All right. Uh, whew, I am cold. I mean, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm having like hot flashes. All right, let's just jump right in. So, welcome back to chapter two of a tour through Toxic TikTok. And I am your steward. Everybody, make sure you have your life jackets on. Buckle in. Get ready. Make sure you have an EpiPen, an inhaler, antihistamines, and let's get ready to go. Oh, also antibiotics. You might need some of those. Okay. Let's get into it. So I wanted to get back, uh, go back over this guy. This guy is, yeah, like again, like I said, quintessential AGP. And this is why it's so important to educate people on things like autogynephilia, um, gynaangiomorphophile, uh, or gynaangiomorphophilia, and, you know, homosexual transsexuals, so that they can, once you or understand those sort of differentials in trans identification same thing with um rapid onset gender dysphoria in trans identified females during adolescence the sort of um you know trans mask and the social contagion factor of trans identity for adolescent girls and you know once you start to understand a lot of that etiology it just becomes so apparent when you look at these different cases like this guy is so obviously quintessentially an autogynophile and that any woman especially is caping for this it's such a shame it's so concerning it's such it's so problematic because these autogynophiles are are the most dangerous iteration of any of these trans identifying people um anyone whose trans identity you have you have people whose trans identity is rooted in self-harm and then you have people whose trans identity is rooted in paraphilia in you know a sexual compulse obsessive compulsion um and autogynophile autogynophiles are rooted in paraphilia a, an obsessive sexual compulsion so here we go let's take a look at this guy i actually didn't even realize who he was until i we went through him last time so this guy is uh gabby tuft gabby come on all right yeah okay let's go and this guy is like huge like no no woman is going to be able to take this guy you know what i mean you just have to like quietly and, and real quick when we talk about like the uh all of the headlines that had stated that the two women who were impregnated at um edna mahone correctional facility in new jersey which is the only women's prison in new jersey um, there are two women right now who are sitting in administrative segregation because they were impregnated by the trans identified males who are fully intact, ver uh, you know, fertile and <laughs> their peak sexuality, peak sexual age and placed in prison cells with women. And oh, wow, what a surprise. They impregnated women, sexually assaulted women. And a lot of the headlines said, oh, it was consensual, consensual sex. Uh, but, you know, and they, I even oh, some of the headlines even said women got pregnant because they had sex with a trans identified with a trans woman. And it's so wrong when you have a man that's this big and the men who are locked up at Edna Mahon Correctional Facility. I mean, these are full grown men. They're built like men. The only difference is maybe that they eventually grew their hair out or, or are wearing makeup. Other than that, in every other way, their, their bone density, their muscular density, their, their just everything is male. And if you're locked up in a closed quarters, and like I said, you know, I, and I told that one story of uh, Cheryl, you know, my best friend who lives with me, who when she was in uh, jail, she got locked up on like something petty. They had a girl 
in their cell who had a seizure fell off the top bunk and died on impact and they were all freaked out and they were like banging on the thing and like help help we think like our our celly just died we need help and they came by take a look at it and like oh okay yeah we're, we're we'll send medical up they said they sat there for three hours with a dead body in their cell so you can't exactly if a man is you know pushing himself on you or is turned on and want, decided he wants to have you and he's you knows that you're locked in a cell with him and he knows that prison administration does not care. It's not like you can go press a button and say, hey, you know, I, I need help. Uh, let me out of here. No, you, you can't just open the door and walk out. You're locked in. And you can't trust that they're going to come quickly and say, oh, you know, they're just going to tell you, settle down, settle down. And um, so how consensual is it? How consensual is it really? When you, it's, it's the, you have two options. You can either sit there and scream and make a big deal over a criminal man who was a murderer who murdered his foster father, not just some random dude on some street shit, his foster father, a man who was taking care of him, who took him into his home and he turns around and murders him. So you really, is that really consent? Or, or is it just survival to just quietly suck it up, try to go somewhere else in your mind, let it happen, and, and just avoid anything you can do that would signal that you're interested in this? Uh, but how much control does one have? Um, and Mia, Marigold says, can you consent to anything when you're in jail? Absolutely not. There is a reason. Same thing. Hakeem was having sex with, um, when he was locked up in juvenile facility, when he was 16 years old, there were two women who took turns having sex with him and they were starting to like fight with each other. Like he was having sex with the, um, his, uh, counselor and with the nurse. These are two women who were in their 40s, 35, and like 45 at the time. And they both were like fighting with each other and like being real jealous with each other over him. And again, this is a 16-year-old kid. You know what I mean? And when it found, you know, there, it, when they found out, those women, women got in trouble. You can't have sex. When there is a female guard who has sex with men... They will walk her through the prison handcuffed. It's like the walk of shame. They make an example out of her. They file charges. And that woman is then, you know, placed on a sex offender registry. Because again, when you are incarcerated, you cannot consent to sexual activity with somebody who has power over you. And in this case, this other inmate has power over these women. It's awful. Oh, and those two women who were having sex with Hakeem as a child, I, I did I did that little video. I found them. I found them. I called them and I checked the shit out of both of them. And I said, we're, well, you know, I, I know that the, like the statute of limitations is passed, but like I'll find a way to expose both of you. One of them still works with children in correctional facilities and the other one is a nurse in some other, you know, ca capacity. But, you know, one is married and moved on and got married and, ha you know, has older kids and all this sort of stuff. And you know what's crazy? One of them who was having sex with him turns out she's the aunt of this guy I went to high school with. His wife, that's her aunt. And I was like, oh, honey, honey, trust me. When I come around and, and when we drop this and I make sure when he's home and you know, we exposed you, it is going to be grand because abusers are abusers, period. And abusers deserve to be exposed. All right. <clears throat> What's it? Yeah, I gotta keep my life with silence. So she could go ahead and do one blows. And I know I feel it still inside me. Yeah, my baby shit don't like nobody. Did you see his hair? I got to keep 
I think he had like a hairline. Uh, he had some kind of like a hairline surgery. He had a scar right across here. I think that they like brought his hairline down and tried to um, make it look more feminine. Okay, and this is the thing, and and so so you guys are telling me that this guy is super vulnerable and oppressed. You know, again, real oppressed people don't choose to be even more oppressed. Real oppressed people. This is why. Why do you think we don't see tons of trans identified males in Saudi Arabia? Why why is that not like you know a huge thing or places where women are treated like garbage? Okay, there's a reason. There's a reason. It's, uh, all right, let's see. Let's take a look. I want to go through this guy a little bit. It, and of course there's the, what is this? His, oh my God. Is this his girlfriend? Oh my God, it is. How did your wife handle your transition? Oh my God. Oh my God. Everybody's been asking, how did Priscilla handle your transition? How did you handle my transition in the beginning? In the beginning, with love, acceptance, and compassion, because I didn't want you to take your life. So it's been really awesome for my freedom and my independence. But at the same time, I totally have moments of missing my big, strong man. Now we share life as friends. And makeup. And, and makeup and hair and, and so going out and, and checking out boys. We don't so do we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. All the time. <laughs> you don't have to understand somebody who is transgender. If you haven't gone through That's it, sad. you don't have to understand it. But can you love? Can you find a place within your heart that gets past your own fear of facing that somebody else is going to make their own choices and live their own life? If you can get over your own fear and tap into love, it can be one of the most beautiful personal transitions that you can experience. Wow. Everybody's been asking. That's really sad. That's really, really sad. And you know she probably depends on him. So they were married for 20 years. Vibe check. Yes, we're still together. Our friendship. But they're really not. Didn't you hear how she said it? She's like, you know, we went from being, you know, he my big strong man to just being friends. You, you know that she's not into this. She's not a lesbian. She doesn't. And, and, oh, my God, it's like, how much of a choice do you have but to just tolerate this? You know, screw screw how these women feel, you know what I mean? And I know it was like Kris Jenner, I know, was like really, really upset. And everybody kind of came at Kris Jenner for being like uh, unaccepting and, and all this sort of stuff. But, again, let's see how many followers he has on TikTok. Let's see. Uh, he's got 366,000 followers. So if she were to be unaccepting, what would happen? He would talk about it on TikTok and she knows that her life, I mean, this guy is now has like this big following. She knows, it, how much is she going to go up to these 366,000 people and be like, yeah, I, it's, it's really unfair. It's really unfair. I wonder if they have children. I wonder, if, oh God, please tell me that they're not putting their kids on here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Leave your kids off TikTok. Leave your kids off the internet. Get your kids off the internet. I'll say it again. Get your kids off the internet, especially when it's like you, you're, you're parading about your, your sexual paraphilia online. Get your kids off of the internet. Okay. I have private, um, I have private pages that are only my friends and only close relationships where I share my kids amongst family, amongst people I grew up with. And that's it, period. Those are locked. They're private. You know, I, I don't have random people on there. And that's it. I think that that's fine. You know, it's it's a good way for me to keep up with my, my friends, kids and my people who are close to my life. But this big public parading of your children, or especially, you know, that like people know that this is weird. How that those kids are going to get, I remember one time I even said to my son, I was like, um, uh, I said, I don't know. I said something and he was like, yeah, I was like, sorry, Joelle. Like, you know, um, I don't know, I said something about like whatever him coming on my channel. He's like, yeah, no, I don't want anything to do with your channel. He's like, I think it's great. You're doing a great job, whatever. Cause they found it. I never even told my kids about my channel, but they like found it. And they're like, Oh my God. And they're like, yeah, I want nothing to do with that. I don't want to be the mom. I don't want to be the kid whose mom has some political channel. Cause I, I'm, I'm good. I was like, yeah, no, I would never, 
You know what I mean? It just, no. Like, these kids don't know how this stuff will affect them later. And especially now as the tide is starting to change and people are starting to, like, see this as for what it is, it's not going to be this big badge of honor for very long. Promise you. So embarrassing. Good morning. This is now 6.43 a.m. I am already at the laptop. He is getting ready. First, <laughs> today I am going to be doing goal setting. Goal setting. Goal setting. Goal setting is so important. No matter. So important, no matter what. <laughs> if you're trans, cisgender, it doesn't matter. But it especially doesn't matter. <laughs> for us trans girls. Us trans girls. <laughs> sometimes we feel like we are so far away from our goals, especially. From our goals far away. <laughs> with our surgeries. <laughs> so my next goal is to do my voice. And now I have to figure out how I'm going to get the money to do my voice surgery. So I am setting goals. It's the best way to start a day. Set I love it. <laughs> it keeps me positive. All Actually, that is what keeps me positive all day long. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, this is this is him asking for donations. Let's be clear. And the kid in the background is like, oh, so sweet. Let's, you know, he's a family. She's a family woman, trans woman. Let's help her get her goal. She's got a family to support. So that's what that was, clearly. Um, second of all, why is you talking about needing surgeries and this why why does that need to happen in front of your children? I firmly believe in strong boundaries between adults and children. Okay? I don't there are so many things that I don't and won't talk about in front of my kids when it came to my um when it came to my divorce, when it came to, you know, Hakeem's incarceration, you know, Hakeem has a relationship with my children. It came to the point where I did have to explain it to my oldest son because he's old enough to kind of pick up on what was going on. Thank you, TPS. TPA cheer Iran uh, SRS access. They murder gay men. Yeah, you know, I that's that actually I need to do a whole video on that. Yeah, so a lot of... Um, trans identifying a lot of homosexual I'm sorry a lot of homosexuals in Iran do transition for um so that they won't be murdered and attacked and you know as homosexuals and so that they can marry uh, as they wish but those are going to be like homosexuals like I'm talking about AGPs like how many AGPs are going to choose who are straight who are lesbians are going to choose to transition. You know what I mean? Um, but you're right. Let's see. Ba, ba, bo. Child seems neglected. Why are they running around yelling for attention while he's filming? And that's the thing, too. It's like, imagine the, the level of narcissism and just mindless self-obsession that these trans-identifying trans people get into. And you have a child, like, you know what I mean? You, you got to pick one or the other. There's just all of the self-obsession, staring in the mirror, doing makeup, you know, analyzing his own body. I mean, just this body dysmorphia. And also this person was obviously like a big gym, like a like rat, like really in the gym constantly. So this person clearly has body image sort of obsession and hyperfixation and this has been going on for years and again this is like the new iteration and, and and maybe it's for attention maybe this person is histrionic probably you know constantly needing attention constantly needing to be in control of his body in some way or another leave kids out of it um marigold kids like i'm here daddy just stares into the camera or mirror all day all day and, and, and again, not just staring in, all right, so staring in the mirror, posting these things online, and then I'm sure going back and, and constantly commenting and going back and forth with all of the followers and stuff, you know, you know, I purposely don't have any notifications from YouTube or any of my social media, because if I was constantly getting notifications to my phone telling me when people comment, I'm sure that it would like inadvertently draw my attention back to YouTube. Once I log off, you know, when I have a like minute or if I'm like cooking or, you know, sitting in the bathtub or something, I'll, I'll go and go through my comments at night, especially when I'm laying in bed. But I really try to put boundaries around how much I'm going back and forth and commenting on stuff. Am I frozen? As long as my voice is good. Damn it. 
Can you guys hear me? Uh, Mimi Russ says, that child is just an accessory to that man like a purse. Yeah. Ugh. Marigold says, yep, like Pavlov's dog salivating from notifications. Jenny Tallworth says, now he's going in the women's changing room at the gym. Y yeah, exactly. In the women's changing, changing room at the gym. This guy is huge. No one's confronting him. Nobody. You know what I mean? And now, now men can't. And they've made it so that now men can't confront them. So women can't confront them because we're scared and he's huge. Now men can't confront them or else they'll get in trouble for a, a hate crime. You know what Hakeem told me? He said that if you get in a fight with any trans identified male in prison for any reason, it'll get elevated to a hate crime. It doesn't matter what it what, it, what is over. You can't bother them, talk to them. Deal with them, period, or else you'll get in trouble for a hate crime. Um, TPS says, I lock, I recommend the Lock Me Out app for, for Droid. It really helps me stay off of Facebook. Yeah, I really don't have a problem with it. But yeah, for anybody else who seems like they struggle, that's a really good idea. Um, I'm pretty good about not being on uh social media when I'm with my kids like that's why you can tell you'll probably like notice that there's certain times of the day where I'm like not on at all um and yeah like my right now my kids are all hanging out with my sister like it's Sunday normally I would never be able to stream on Sunday but my sister took that I was like really sick last night um so she ended up taking them for the morning which I really appreciate it I love it I love that I have so much family around me um Let's see. Mm -mm. All right. Let, yeah. Ew. Overcompensation for a trans woman is absolutely a thing, especially early in our transition. I used to have super long stiletto nails. I used to wear all the makeup, all the bright color lipstick. I would have bright pink eyeshadow, bright blue eyeshadow, whatever color the rainbow I could find. <laughs> Obviously, I had wigs, got a receding hairline, and I was waiting for my hair to grow back in for my hair transplant. But the question is, yeah, he did get a hair transplant. It's because Called we it. are so desiring for the inner woman to align with the outward experience. We want to experience the feminine as we integrate socially. We want to be recognized as a female and having a male facial structure. See, that's what this is all about. It's all about wanting to control how people treat you and how they regard you. And again, they like the thrill of being the sort of submissive sort of like, why is he all acting all like dainty and vulnerable? Me, 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 me. We would love to not be vulnerable. I, I don't know what woman like likes being vulnerable, likes being, you know, knowing that there's a level of danger just existing as a woman in the world. You know, when you get catcalled, when you get followed on the street, they like that. That's a thrill for them because it's not really a danger because if they want to switch back into a man, they can. Do you remember like Hakeem was saying, they've got that one trans identifying male who will sit there and act all girly and cutesy and whatever. But as soon as some shit starts to go down, he goes, oh yeah, you about to make princess go back in her cage. Y'all about to make princess go back in her cage. Like he turns into a man real fast. We don't have that switch, sir. We don't get to just turn it all on. You know, and that's why I really, really, really think that women need to equalize their level. And I talked, I recently just, by the way, as like a side note, and I have this right here. I just bought this. It has a holster. Look how beautiful this is, okay? It has a holster here. I can put it on through my belt loop, right? And this is, look at this. Look how nice this is. I'm not playing with anybody. I'm not fighting a man. Point blank, period. I'm not fighting a man. This um, ex-army veteran sold this to me, and it's like this beautiful handcrafted knife. I can keep it holstered on me like I love. I'll show you. Okay, because I'm not playing with nobody. I'm really not. Like, I'm not fucking playing with anybody. Holster it right here, you know. Keep it, keep it on me. Uh, I really believe that women should not have to exist in the world afraid and not have to exist in the world. I'm not staying home. I'm not hiding, but I'm not playing with you either. I'm not, I'm not fighting a man. I had one situation when a man tried to run me off the street. 
Um, and I, he kept trying to like, it was a road rage situation and he basically was trying to force me to pull over. And I was like, I finally pulled over and he got out of the car and he started like almost like walking towards me in like a charging way. Like, and like, you know, saying something and I let him know. And I was like, sir, I got a license to carry and I got it on me. So what do you really want to do? Because I'm not fighting you. And he was just like, oh, all right. And I just kind of was like, you know, I had my shit holstered and I stood up and it stood out of the car and he already knew what time it was. He's like, all right, all right, my fault, my fault. Got back in the car and like peeled the fuck out of there. I'm not playing with you, okay? I'm not doing it. And now if they're going to destroy our safe spaces and our ability to tell men no and our ability to set a threshold off which they cannot cross... I'm not staying home. You know what I mean? Like this just puts everybody in a bad, 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 bad situation. Bad situation. Um, I really believe that every woman should conceal carry. And I know that there's this whole issue where they say, oh, you know, but guns get used against women and, um, you know, it's, it's dangerous. Da, 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 da. I think the biggest problem is people buying guns and thinking that that's enough. Okay, buying guns isn't even step one. Step one is taking a course about gun laws, both federally and in your state and in the states in general. You should know that stuff and know it well. Okay, you should know what the different counties rules are. You should know your state laws. You should know what what the penalties are. You should know how to transfer a gun, how to purchase one. You should already be well-versed in, in, in shooting one. Then you do research and find out what's a good gun for you. What's a gun that you're going to be able to handle the kickback on? It's not going to buckle your uh, wrist. You know, what's a good gun, a house protection gun versus a gun to carry? You might want a shotgun for your house. You might want a, a pistol for, for to carry. Maybe a revolver, you know, revolvers are good guns and you know what? They're a lot less likely to jam than an automatic, you know, but a revolver learns a different skill, uh, requires a different skill set. You know, you might by then, once you've learned all that sort of stuff and you've purchased, you don't just purchase a gun, you purchase a gun safe, you purchase a holster, you purchase, um, uh, like safety apparatus to keep it even safer, especially if you have kids, you purchase an extra clip, you purchase ammunition and you store all that, you lock it up, you keep it very safe. You never store your gun loaded ever. You never keep one in the head ever, unless you're walking through someone danger, somewhere dangerous, and then you want to keep one in the head. Um, but you learn how, how to do all those things. Once you get a gun, you need to do ongoing education. I'm talking about taking courses. I'm talking about getting one-on-one -on -one attention with somebody who can train you and teach you. You're right. People who just buy a gun are putting themselves in danger. And that's why a lot of, you know, guns fall into the wrong hands because people are just throwing it in a drawer. They're keeping it loaded. They're keeping ammunition with the gun. No, you need to learn. Okay. And also you need to learn that you don't ever pull that unless you're willing and ready to use it. You don't just wave it around and show it off and then somebody's going to come grab your hand and disarm you, okay? I've watched, listen, I, I, I've i watched somebody be disarmed with a gun before. That can switch on you real fast. You need to be willing and ready to discharge that weapon when and if and God forbid the time comes, okay? Because you just holding it isn't enough. Okay, you need to know how to discharge it in a non-lethal way. There's ways that you can discharge your weapon if you don't want to kill the person, you know, but that will put the person down. You need to have excellent marksmanship so that, you know what I mean? You need to know what to do if your gun jams. Have a backup knife, have something, okay? And you need to be practicing it. You need, and finally, you need to keep it on you always have it on you. If it's on you, then no, there's, you know, your kids can't go and grab it and whatever. And if it's not on you, it is locked in a, in a, uh, fireproof safe, an unbreakable fireproof safe. 
You, you can't play around with that sort of stuff. Buying it is never enough. You train, you train, you train, you train for the rest of your life and you train situational defense. That's why you can go even further, learn, you know, like something like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or situational self-defense, how to de-escalate a situation without having to pull it and also training when to know when you absolutely need to. That's responsible and safe gun ownership. And then also making sure that you always have a, backup plan if you're somebody who you know god forbid you're going through a difficult situation god forbid you're you you find yourself feeling depressed or feeling something you need a good place where you can safely store that weapon that's away from you if you know that you know having it for some reason is not safe for you um and then you can temporarily I have a good girlfriend who is a birth worker that I you know was another doula who uh used to work in this community and she started a really really great 501c3 nonprofit program that was called Hold My Guns and it was for anybody who felt like they needed to not have a gun in the house because they were depressed or they had a spouse who was depressed and they just for whatever reason they think right now is not I, I don't want to sell my guns I don't want to get rid of them I just need them out for a little while and she has this whole system of like uh, a bunch of safes and stuff where people can check their guns in with her and her facility is some sort of storage facility and have it held there for them um, <clears throat> do I take knife classes? I mean, I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, but no, I haven't taken, I, I've done a lot more with like firearm training and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm not, you know, I, I'm going to continue to keep learning, learning. I'll learn for the rest of my life. Um, I always carry my keys between my fingers like claws. MMP shield has a really great for any woman like this is a huge knife like this is big as shit okay uh, I also have another really tiny one it's like carbon steel it's super lightweight and it clips and you just pull it out it's and it's so lightweight it's very very dense uh, metal it's really really great to have something like that um but I'm not I'm not hiding in the world I'm just not doing it um <clears throat> Marigold said, I had a class with a guy who went to jail for shooting a home invader in San Diego. I had a hard time believing his story. It was just so unfair. He said the guy had money for a good lawyer. Oh, God. That, see, and also that's another thing too, you guys. We need to put pressure on these legislators that they are going to side with home defense. We have a right to defend our homes. We have a right to defend our bodies. We have a right to defend our, our families. It is never acceptable that, that somebody should have to, you know, risk prison time to save their own lives. I, I'm not being a victim. I don't give a fuck, okay? I'll fight that shit later. You're not going to kill me. You're not going to take my life. You're not going to come for my children, period. I'm not, I'm not with it. I'm not doing it. All right. Anyway, let's finish this clown has to say. I have a male body with fat deposits of a male and the muscle mass of a male early in the transition is extremely difficult and so what do we do while we're waiting for our facial feminization surgery and we're waiting for the hormones to kick in we go and we overcompensate i remember putting my nails on a countertop hoping that somebody would see that in addition to the wig in addition to the makeup and all of the short skirts i would wear or short shorts half tops whatever it might be and hope that that person would say ma'am instead of sir. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. But in the moment, it helped the dysphoria. And it so that that person would say ma'am instead of sir. That's what this is all about. It's all relative. It's all about, like, again, influencing what people think of you, how they treat you. And that's, that's oppression. You're choosing that. You want that for yourself. You know, you wouldn't, and then just sit there and say, oh, but we're, you know, in danger and oppressed. Stop it. Okay, look at all your muscle mass. You chose to get on testosterone blockers. You chose to get on cross-sex hormones that would, you know, minim like make your muscle mass less. Certainly not, you know, you're still way stronger than any female that I've ever seen. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's not for the dysphoria. It's the better sell the fantasy, the delusion. It's, again, yeah, it's not fair. 
It, it's ridiculous. That's fine. You want to do that? Fine. But I'm not. Oops. But I'm not participating, and I'm not going to sit here and you know, uh, I, I'm not coddling this. I don't want to participate. You can look however you want, and like the real like me. Oh, <laughs> so you know sometimes. I just feel like we, you know, and again, look, look how he's like always sitting like this, like, you know, it's always like, oh, and, um, I just, I, just so that we sometimes are just so, so, um, it, like who acts like that? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're acting like a trans identified male. That's what you are. You're not acting like a woman. You're acting like a, a cross-dressing male who likes to perform, you know, stereotypical femininity that was created by men. Perform it all you want. You guys created it. It's yours. Have it. But don't tell us that that makes you a woman. Ridiculous. Lest we remember, says he is literally one of the reasons why I'm afraid to use public spaces. Of course. And imagine locking this guy up in a woman's prison. Well, he says he's a woman. Come on. Uh, martial arts is expensive, at least to find a basic. Class. Actually, you know, the, um, the studio that I go to, it's $100 a month, which, you know, I guess it depends. But I have, you get to go unlimited amount of times. Um, so it's really not that bad. I, I mean, I think. I, you know, and I just think that there are skills that are really, really uh important you know you can go as many to like any class you want they have like a ton of classes throughout the week and go multiple times a day so um but yeah i don't know i yeah okay um let's see what else one do we want to do um when you change somebody else's life for the better when you help someone when you contribute when you give back that is the true meaning of significance and she just is so courageous in so many ways that it encourages me to step into my courage and my personal power i learn from her every single day because those things that you've just done that thing that event that change you made in somebody's life that will never go away you can't just they'll never forget it whereas with clothing 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 dies it, it gets destroyed it fades cars get worn out homes become decrepit money comes and goes you can buy everything in the world but those things come and go but the mark you make on somebody's life the change that you make in somebody's life for the better that will never be forgotten that will live forever when you change somebody else's life what do they live in, like, Florida? Their house, like, the way that they style their house looks very Florida. Um, yeah, and this, uh, yeah, the whole style looks very Florida. Okay, I, I can't. All right, let's take a look at uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo are really good for women because our gravity is on our hips. In some cases, that is an advantage on the ground. Brit probably when I was one of Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. Yo, you know what's crazy? When I used to work, when I first met Hakeem, he was like really like lightweight. He was like 175 pounds. Like, but he was like really ripped up and cut up. He was just like kind of like just had no body fat. And um, my, oh, hold on for one second, guys. My bad. My sister was supposed to drop my kids. I thought she was dropping them off at 2.30, but eh, they came back early. Oh, hold on. So, I gotta go. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Let's see. Did we finish this real quick? Let's just finish it real quick, this one thing. Hold on. When you help someone, when you contribute, when oh, no, you that give was back. it. All right, yeah, anyway. Oh, sorry, I gotta go. Um, we'll just look at one last thing. Hold on. And I'll sign whip, off. Whip. I don't know if they're gonna get rid of me for this music. 
That's why the one thing I don't like about TikTok is I get messed up because of the uh, here. Let's do this versus this. Is that her dad or his dad? Uh, his poor daughter. His poor, like, what, how, what, like, have some decency and just wait, wait until your kids are grown. Don't make them do this. You know, don't make them do this. Um, Damn. Here, let's look at this real quick. Why did I choose to transition from this massive man to a female? You're not. A, no, 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 no. A secret since childhood. Hold on. She said he's. He said, "Why did I transition from this muscle man to a female?" No, honey, you didn't transition to a female. What are you talking about? No, you no, no, no. See, it, this is the slippery slope. You used to be like, oh, trans identified male. Oh, trans woman. No, no, no. You're a trans woman, okay? Trans identified male. You weren't you didn't transition to a female. That's not possible. What are you talking about? So aggravating. But even more so, this Those is what I'm doing with it. That you just done, that thing, that event, that change you made in somebody's life, that will never go away. You can't just they'll never forget it whereas with clothing 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 dies it, it gets destroyed it fades cars get worn out homes become decrepit money comes and goes you can buy everything <laughs> in the world but those things come and go but the mark you make on somebody's life the change that you make in somebody's life for the better that will never be forgotten that will live forever why did i choose to transition from this massive man to a female. Okay. All right. So the like fake inspiration, like clothes will just dis like disintegrate. Our houses will end, but the change you make in someone's, you didn't answer the question. Did he answer the question at all? No. All right, sir. That that's all good. But, um, no, the question was, why did you do this? You literally didn't answer the question. You're not helping anybody. This is all about you, you and attention for you and how you feel and what you want and everybody, how they treat you and what you want people to think that, that, okay. So what's the answer? I, I now have left watching that video. I'm now dumber than I was before. I know now less about you than I, before. Really confused. Uh, Repi Cheap says, problem is the change isn't for the better. Your negative marks you make on your loved one's lives will be remembered forever. Yeah, and his daughter, and eventually, you know, again, kids are so easy to groom, yo. Kids are so easy to groom, and, you know, the, the kid, they, they're they not going to put up the video. They're only going to put up the videos where the kid is, is participating the way that they want the kid to participate. You know what I mean? This isn't, like, in real time. They're not... We're not, we don't know how this child feels. We don't know how this woman feels. This woman looks henpecked. You know, he obviously, again, it takes a, a level of like, of like arrogance and clearly like being in a dominant position. A lot of these AGPs, like I said, had a whole history of living very masculine, dominant lives, very in control lives. And I think that there is a correlation between like men who are into femdom and, you know, BDSM where they're the submissive one. It, it's very similar to this. They're used to always being, you know, in control and everyone afraid of them. And they want to force people to now, you know, can, you know, dominate them, but it's all controlled. There's, they still have control the entire time. They're never not in control, you know, and it's like you, you have to go along with it. And again, we know abusive men aren't going to let you just walk out of their lives. You're not allowed to just leave when you want. We know that the most dangerous thing about an abusive relationship with a man is not staying in the abusive relationship. It's leaving it. It's leaving it. You know, and again, women have a good sense of, you know, uh, self-preservation. She might know that the best move in, in to preserve herself is to just go along with it. Just smile and hey, maybe she can get like a spinoff following. Maybe she can start, you know, something and some of her his followers will, followers will come on to her. You know, and they're probably making money this way. She's probably like, well, at least he's making money. Let me just follow along so I can at least get something out of this. 
you know, we don't know what this goes through and how, how degrading as a woman is it. So now, of course, as a woman, the wife probably has to sit there and compliment him and worry about him and focus on him and how he feels, what he likes. And, you know, ew, 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 ew. No offense, but like imagine having sex with one of them too, especially if you've been like having sex with him as a man. So now what? Like, how, ew. Like, what does he want you to do? Like, you know, play with his tits and stuff and let, like, it, like peg him, use a strap on. Come on. Um, narcissistic breadcrumbs for the wife. Exactly. Um, let's see. No, I'm from Cali. We use dude for everything and everyone. It's either dudes or y'all depending on need. What do you mean? Um, women are always blamed in any situation. We need to stop doing that. Yeah. No. Like, again, you, we don't always know why these women are stuck coddling this, you know, especially they were married for 20 years. And again, dismantling your whole life. I know is not easy. I was married for nearly 10 years. It's very hard. It's very scary. You know, you have so many people who are a part of the family at that point. But, um, all right, I got to go anyway. Thank you guys. Sorry for this being short. Um, oh God. Hold on real quick. We'll do one last one. Then, then I'll go. Mia, this person's asking how I changed my voice. Did I do the right comment reply? Did I do it? What do you mean? Did you do it? Did I do it? Oh. <laughs> Mia, this person's asking how I changed yeah. my voice. Did I do the right comment reply? Did I do it? What do you mean, did you do it? Did I do it? So cute. So cute. So funny. See, it's again, it's a choice. I don't I don't get to just change my voice when I want. Uh, this isn't me performing, you know? We know that you, like here's another thing. Um we know that people who have more like a fem like feminine and female traits uh, typically are taken less seriously, you know, and it's the same thing about one thing I've always liked about being tall is, yeah, you know, some men are intimidated and whatever, but studies show that tall women are taken more seriously intellectually than shorter women because for some reason when we can see somebody eye to eye, and I'm talking about like when you're standing around in a circle, if you have to look down at somebody, you almost kind of like have a tendency to infantilize them. Um, and I've always appreciated, oh, that's Hakeem, I gotta go. Um, you know, it's, but uh, what's the reason for that? Again, because it's like, you know, women have a voice that doesn't change from childhood. You know, we're treated like kids a lot of the time. We're treated like children. We're, you know, not whatever. He He's choosing this. This is oppression is when you have an immutable trait that you can't change that you're discriminated against because of that. Okay. This is a choice that he made. It's a choice. But, um, all right, guys. Yeah. I'm like five, nine and a half. I think I'm, sh I'm actually shrinking though. They said I'm now like five, eight. Which is weird. I've always been almost 5'10", but I don't know. I guess I'm getting old. I gotta go. I gotta go. All right. Bye-bye.